Python and Pico Peeps and Wonders of Wi-Fi. I'm Professor John Gallagher, and in this CircuitPython School lesson, we're going to learn how to access the internet using our Raspberry Pi Pico W. Let's connect to big learning. Now, since we're going to set up Wi-Fi on the Pico W, we need some place to connect to and get data from. So I'm going to suggest that we access the time using the website worldtimeapi.org. Now, this is a good first choice because using the internet to get time for a board is a really common thing for makers to want to do. And this World Time API site provides what's called an API or an application programming interface. Now, an API is a set of standards provided by a service so that other programs can make requests and receive responses from that service. So we're going to write a Python program to make a request, sometimes called making an API call, and the World Time API org website will respond to that request by providing us with data. Now, almost all API calls send back data in a format called JSON, but unfortunately your browser might not be set up to display formatted JSON. It might look like a jumble of text all running together. So let's see if your browser is set up to show JSON, and if not, I'll show you where you can download Chrome or Safari extensions to get things formatted nicely. So open a browser and enter the URL worldtimemapapi.org. That should take you to this site. So far, so good. But now let's enter the actual URL that makes an API call. This first one will show cities in official time zones, and you can find a city in your time zone so that you can get the appropriate time for your location. To do this, click up in the browser's address bar and add to the URL after .org, enter in all lowercase, the slash character, then API, slash again, and time zone, all one word. Then press return, and if your browser shows all of these time zones flowing together like a single line, like I'm showing here, then your browser does not format JSON. But if you use Chrome, you can find and add an extension called JSON Formatter. To do this, just search for Google Chrome Store, click the link for the Chrome Web Store, then click on Extensions. I'll search for JSON Formatter, this first one that shows up looks good. It's five stars. It's featured by Google. It's got lots of reviews. So I'll click Add to Chrome and click Add Extension. Just a quick note, if you're a Safari user, you can go to the Safari menu and select Safari Extensions, then search for Better JSON and choose this first option here that says Better JSON for Safari. Now, once you have your JSON formatting extension installed, return to that URL that has all the time zones. And look at this. Things are formatted so that I can read them. There's a time zone on each line. You can scroll through and find the time zone for your city. The one closest to me in Boston in the United States is America slash New York. So I'm gonna highlight and copy that. Then head up to the address box in your browser that has the pages URL and add a slash at the end of the URL after the word time zone and paste in the time zone that you just copied. Mine added quotes around it, so I wanna delete those. There shouldn't be any spaces in your URL either. And what I've just entered is the URL for the API call that I want that's gonna get me New York time. So it should look like this worldtimemapapi.org slash API slash time zone slash America with a capital A slash New York with a capital N capital Y and an underscore in between the new and the York. So once you've got the URL that you want in here, press return. And what we get back is the data that we can use to get the current time. Now time is a little tricky. We'll cover taking this data and formatting it as a usable time in the next lesson. But what I want to do for now is to make sure that we can connect our Pico to the internet and we can at least get this data that we're seeing here. So first, let's talk how we can set up our Pico to access our local Wi-Fi network. Now we need to tell your Pico the name of the Wi-Fi network you should use and the password for accessing that network. Now it's not good practice to put that information in your Python program, so we'll enter it in a separate file CircuitPython uses for this. And that file will be named settings.toml. Now we'll save that file on your Pico, but also be aware that if anybody has access to your Pico, they could potentially access your Wi-Fi network's password. Now we can put more data in this file, but for now, we'll just save three lines. Wi-Fi underscore SSID should equal the string that contains the exact name of your Wi-Fi network. And here we also have a second line that says Wi-Fi underscore password, which equals the access password for that network. And for my students on campus, the network name that they should use is Boston College, one word, no space between Boston and college, with a capital B and a capital C. So don't use EduRome, use Boston College. And they should also use an empty string in here for the password. So that's just two dollars double quotation marks next to each other with nothing in between. And the reason why my students do that is in an earlier lesson, they should have found their Pico's MAC address and registered that with the campus network using the Helix server. 
If you're watching this tutorial and you're going to be using your Pico on a campus network like a university, school, or corporation, check with your network personnel. But for home Wi-Fi users, just enter your local Wi-Fi network name and your Wi-Fi password here. Next, we don't need this, but I think this is nice for a test. We're going to enter a test variable named test underscore variable, and we'll use this to include a message so that we can confirm that our file is set up properly. So I'm just going to write successfully read from settings.toml. Woohoo! And now this part that's a bit tricky. Normally when we we save things in Moo, they have a .py extension, but in order to get the .toml extension in here, what we need to do is we need to create the file as a new file, then we click on the save button. Now it's important to use the save button and not double click on the tab and use save as, because there's an error with that save as that shows up and it will only save files as .py. So you want to click on the save button, then find your CircuitPy volume, and you'll also see this little pull down down here. It probably says .py by default, but if you pull this down, you should be able to select the other option like it's shown right here. Then enter your file name as settings.toml, all lowercase, remember that's an O, not a zero. Save this to your CircuitPy volume and you should be good to go. And then after we create this, we're just going to enter a two line code.py file and we're going to run this to make sure that we can read and print in our test variable. So now let's head over to Moo and create this. First, let's create that settings.toml file. So I'm going to click on new here. And I'll put a comment up top that says settings.toml, then enter in all caps Wi-Fi underscore SSID and set that equal to the string that contains your Wi-Fi network name. My students, this is where you enter Boston College one word with a capital B, capital C. Then below this, we'll say Wi-Fi underscore password, setting this equal to the string that's the logon password for your Wi-Fi network. My students, just enter this as an empty string, so double quote followed by double quote. Then we'll also create a test variable called test underscore variable, all lowercase, and we'll set this equal to the string successfully read from settings.toml. Woohoo! Now let's save this, and remember, don't double click that tab, you want to click on the save button. I'm already in my CircuitPy volume, but you want to click down here where it says python.py, and select other. And this is going to allow us to enter the name settings.toml up top, and then save. You might also want to save a backup of this to your CircuitPython school folder, or if you have a folder on your laptop that holds backup files for your board, it's nice to have this file handy so you can just drag it on your board in case you need to reinstall any files. So I'm going to close this now, and we'll enter a test program, so I'll click on New again, and I'll just put a comment up top that says Test Settings File, we're going to Import OS, then we'll say Print, open parentheses, os.getenv, open parens, and in between double quotes, the variable name test underscore variable, then close this with two closing parentheses. So what getenv does is it looks inside of our settings.toml file for a variable name that matches any string that we pass in, and it returns the results of that variable. So whatever we set it equal to in settings.toml. Those variables are sometimes called environment variables. That's why this is called getenv. Let's see what we get. I'm going to click on save to save this. I do want to save this as a Python file. I want to save it as code.py. So this is a Python program that I'm executing. I'll replace anything that's there. Let me open the serial console and click save again. And look at our code.py output. It says successfully read from settings.toml. Woohoo! So anytime we say os.getenv, we can pass in the name of one of the variables that we put in our settings.toml file. And we'll use that in our next program to get the Wi Fi network name. That's Wi Fi underscore SSID and the Wi Fi password. Let's take a look at how we write code to access the internet. So there are a bunch of libraries we need to import for this. OS, time, SSL, Wi-Fi, socket pool, and Adafruit underscore requests. And I'm going to put my import board statement on the line below this, just so that I can keep all my Wi-Fi stuff in a single line to easy copy and paste this into new code examples. And then to log into our Wi-Fi network, we use this line here. Wi-Fi.radio.connect, and we pass in our Wi-Fi name and our password, and we use the os.getenv command that we just used, but we're going to pass in Wi-Fi underscore SSID and Wi-Fi underscore password, which should get our Wi-Fi name and our password from our settings.toml file. Then we'll just print out to confirm that we have connected to Wi-Fi. Next, we set up something called a socket pool. Now, this is networking jargon for a reusable object that will keep track of the Pico's endpoint in point-to-point -point communication. The other point that we're about to access is World Time API. And in the line below this, we set up a session object, and that's going to be used to make the API requests or API calls. Now, these two lines will probably never change in future code, so you can just reuse them as you see them here. 
But then what we need to do is we need to create the URL that we want to access. That's the URL of the site where we're making the API call. So if you entered this into the browser, it should show you in the browser the data that we want to return to our Pico. So I'm going to name this variable URL, a good name for a URL, and I'll set this equal to the string HTTPS colon slash slash world time API dot org slash API slash time zone. So we'll all have that part, but you might be in a different time zone than I am. So let's create a separate variable named time zone and set this equal to the time zone code that you got when you accessed world time map API dot org earlier in this lesson. Mine was America slash New York with this capitalization, the hyphen between the new and York, the spelling and capitalization is very important. And then below this, I'm going to update my URL, setting URL equal to URL plus time zone. And anytime I write code that acts as a URL, I like to print it out to the serial console so I can go back and copy it and paste it into a browser. If I want to debug things or double check that I'm accessing the right website and the address is valid, then by saying requests.getURL, we make the API call and the data we get back should be the same as the data we see in the web page for our browser when we type in the URL that we've created created in our URL variable here with the time zone at the end. So all that website data should come back and it should be stored in the variable response. So we'll just print out response here. So let's head over to Moo. We'll enter this code up, see if it works. And if it does, we've got our Pico making API calls and reporting data back from the internet. So I'll delete my test code and I'll write a comment saying making an API call. I meant to say call and for some reason Moo wrote callable for me. That must be some keyword guess that Moo put in for your code completion. Feel free to change that back to call. And I'm going to import OS comma time comma SSL comma Wi-Fi comma socket pool comma Adafruit underscore requests. And then the next line I'll import board. Then let's log into the Wi-Fi network using the credentials in settings.toml. And we do that with the command Wi-Fi dot radio dot connect passing in between parentheses OS dot get ENV and between parentheses here the string Wi-Fi underscore SSID all caps close parens comma os.getenv again, and between parentheses, this is going to be the string Wi-Fi underscore password, all caps. And just make sure you've got two close parens at the end. This logs into the Wi-Fi network with our password. Then after we're done here, we'll just print out connected to Wi-Fi. Then we'll set up a socket and sockets just set up an endpoint for communication as a reusable pool. So we're going to create a variable called pool and set this equal to socket pool dot socket pool, capital S, capital P. And between parentheses, we pass in Wi-Fi dot radio. Then we're going to create an object so that a request for web data can be made. We'll call this requests and set it equal to Adafruit underscore requests dot capital S session. And in parentheses, we'll pass in pool comma SSL dot create underscore default underscore context open and close parens and one more close parens. Now these two lines might seem super jargony, but the good news is you shouldn't need to change these anytime you're writing code to make an API call. So just make sure you've got these two lines in here after you connect to Wi-Fi. Then we want to set up the URL we're going to call, and this is going to be one to get the time. So we'll set up that URL. We're going to call the variable to hold the URL, just URL, and we'll set that equal to the string HTTPS colon slash slash world time API dot org slash API slash time zone slash. And then in the next line, we'll create a variable called time zone and set this equal to the string that represents your time zone that you saw previously in this lesson when we accessed that time zones page. Now mine is America slash New York with a capital A and a capital N and a capital Y and an underscore between New and York. You can go back and double check that page to make sure that you've got the spelling and capitalization correct. And you should absolutely make sure that you've got that correct. And then below this, we'll just say URL equals URL plus this time zone variable. Now, I always like to print out the URL that I'm about to access. So I'm going to say print, and this is going to be an F string. And in between quotes, we'll say accessing URL colon curly braces. And in between the curlies, we'll put in the URL. So the URL will print out in the console, and you can always copy and paste it into the browser if you want to double check your results. Then below this, we'll create a variable called response, which equals requests. This object we set up here to make the API requests dot get and we pass in the URL. So what that'll do is it'll get the data from the web and it will put that in a variable named response. Now in our next lesson, we'll actually parse out the individual bits of data that we get back and we'll use them to assemble an accurate time. But for now, we'll just print out all the results we get back. So we'll say print 
in between parens, an F string, double quotes, the API returned the text, colon, and then I'm gonna put in a backslash N. What that does is it forces a new line so that my response will print out on the next line. Then I'll put in curly braces, and between the curly braces, I'll say response, the text that I got back in the line above, but I have to put dot text after it. There's some additional data that comes back in the response in addition to text, and I just wanna print out the text. And that's it. So let's open the Serial Console, click on Save, and we can see that we're connected to Wi-Fi. We're accessing this URL, and hey, look at these results we've got. Nice. Now, the data we're getting back is in that JSON format, but unfortunately, it's not printing out nicely formatted like your web browser does since you've installed that extension. But, and your data will vary because you're accessing this at a different time and you might be in a different time zone. But mine says abbreviation EST for Eastern Standard Time. There's a date time in here. It isn't nicely formatted, but this is in fact the date when I'm recording this lesson. There's something called raw offset that's negative 18,000. We'll learn about that in our next lesson. And if I head up up here in my console, I can copy the URL that I assembled. See how this is the URL we entered plus our time zone. And if we head over to our browser and we paste this in, I should see almost the same data. It's likely just a few seconds off from the data in our console since this is a new URL call that was made after the call that showed data in the console. But this is nicely formatted. The date that we've got here isn't super easy to figure out, but in the next lesson, we'll cover how to parse out the individual bits of this data that we want, and we'll discuss how to convert this into a usable time and date for the internal clock in our Pico W. So in the meantime, I'm gonna save this to my CircuitPython school folder as Pico W API call, and I'm gonna close this and reopen the code.py on my board, and I hope that you feel the power of your new Wi-Fi accessing skills, my gifted friend, but be sure to stay tuned because in our next lesson, we'll cover some of the techniques that we need to use to disassemble the gnarly concept of time with time zone offsets, daylight savings times, leap years, and all that stuff, but until then, Continue to hack.